And so I wanted to ask a question relating to um, Dr. Hipping's work, uh, but this is a question to everyone. Um, and so in some of your research, you show that conservatives tend to have a more threat sensitive mind. Um, and you give some examples for why they may feel um, more strongly about like um, certain gun policies. And, um, and then also you, in another study, you showed how when showing people images of um, mutilations or torture, just like triggering images, um, you found that liberals consist consistently had more of a response or activation in parts of their somatosensory cortex. Um, and so I'm just trying to understand like why might it be that those who are more threat sensitive do not exhibit the same response when they see these like images that are particularly triggering? Um, and is it based on like the perceived direction of that threat relative to themselves? Um, yeah, if you want to comment on that. Yeah, well, that's a, a good summary. We did a study that did show that the somatosensory two, which is a part of the brain that's generally been associated with um, both pain response, but also seeing somebody else in pain. So it looked as though uh, when people on the left saw these images of mutilations, there was a, a kind of empathic reaction that was not particularly prevalent when people were on the, uh, the right. You know, you asked the $64 question, why is that? And, you know, I'll leave it to the psychologist, especially the developmental psychologist, to figure out what exactly has done what. But my, I guess, default assumption is that we're a combination of our genetics and our experiences. And so whatever it is that's, you know, put that package together, uh, you know, that tends to solidify when we're early adults. Uh, you know, we found very little political change, uh, change in political orientations after somebody gets to about age 25. Um, you know, this notion that everybody moves to the right uh, there's a, actually a, an extremely small drift to the right um, by some people and, and very little drift to the left. So um, anyway, I think w whatever it is that, that kind of comes together and then I don't know if you want to call it hardwired or not, as long as you recognize that hardwired does not have to be genetic. You know, uh, we can, our environmental experiences can leave a biological imprint on us as well. So don't, don't forget that. It's not, not that kind of nature versus nurture, but that all comes together. And then, yeah, it leads, as you say, to some people being fearful of things that other people are not fearful of. And Dr. Hickin, oh, sorry, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I was gonna say, and you know, as, as I mentioned, kids with abuse history see the world as a more dangerous place. Uh, people with, with trauma histories have a sort of a decreased threshold for amygdala activation, which is that sort of fear response. Um, and so when, you know, you know, so people have some kind of predisposition, certainly, you know, coming out of childhood into, you know, adulthood, you know, sort of liberal or conservative, but that can be, you know, amplified when politicians use language, uh, sort of emotionally loaded language that activates uh, 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 or triggers, um, uh, individuals or, you know, fear uh, that they potentially carry around with them from early experiences. And that's what actually Trump is just very effective in doing with his, um, uh, did, you, did you call them venerators? I think, yeah, 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 yeah. You, that, um, and, and, and I actually wanted to ask in that national survey, did you have any kind of uh, authoritarianism questions? Uh, in there, uh, any kind of measure of authoritarianism, because um, you you noted a number of different kind of issues where there was sort of an unexpected difference between liberals and conservatives that liberals were higher than than conservatives, sort of unexpectedly. But what I would be looking for is and is that you know one of the the key element the key questions in the authoritarian personality measure is. Uh, obedient, you know, agree, disagree, obedience to authority is one of the chief virtues a child should learn. Um, and that's, you know, really consistent with the, you know, the, the childhood punishment effects that we've found. Yeah, I had the RWA battery and the SDO and also the, I think it was just the four uh, most common child, uh, you know, 
what what do you prefer children to be raised as items in the survey? And mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I found you know to me there's a kind of a they're authoritarian uh, just about certain things. You know, there are other ways in which uh, the Trump supporters really react very strongly against authority. You know, ask Gretchen Whitmer. Um, you know, they uh, they don't like to be told what to do in a lot of situations. So I think as long as we we introduce that element to authoritarianism, uh, then I feel feel good about it. And and yeah, but I think that's an important qualification. They're not just blanket authoritarians. They really, you know, a lot of these motorcycle clubs that love Trump. You know, their whole mo is to to kind of resist authority. So I think that that needs to be introduced into the equation as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I really see that and, you know, the, kind of the whole libertarian strain as a reaction to control that they experienced earlier in their life and a rejection of that. Um, so that I, one book title I, I kind of thought of using was Childhood Matters, uh, which kind of emphasizes and, you know, because a lot of political scientists, I, you know, I would put in NSF proposals and the political scientists didn't like, didn't want to hear anything about childhood, <laughs> at least the reviewers I got, um, where I think it really can play, and I think does play an important role that's often overlooked. 